Three Women, the podcast by Companies United to End Domestic Violence. Hello and welcome to this new edition of One in Three Women, the podcast. One in Three Women is the first European network of companies committed to fighting violence against women. The network came into being in reaction to an alarming statistic. According to the World Health Organization, one in three women suffer physical and or sexual violence at some point in their lives. In the context of the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, the podcast One in Three Women hears from those who suffer violence, those who support them and who take action. This year, once again, we've turned our attention to the world of work. Today, our guests are a manager and one of his team members. They've known each other for many years now. How did you meet? I hired this staff member in 2012 for a position more dedicated to men in our organization. I'd met this employee and she clearly already had fully developed skills and also developing skills with high potential. She's very dynamic, very cheerful. She did the job well and quickly integrated into the team. But that cheerfulness was hiding the abuse you were suffering from your partner. Unfortunately, this went on for almost six years. The violence happened randomly, once in a while, generally when the children were away from home. You hide it, you lie. You try to keep things under wraps so as not to show it to the outside world. My local team would often comment that they noticed things or that Isabel was late or absent. But she'd say, no, it was the door. No, I, I fell over. We weren't able to get any real answers about what she was going through. And then one day, the abuse actually happened at work. Can you tell us about what happened? I ended up in a car chase for more than 20 minutes from my house to my workplace. My boss was the only person there. I saw a car arriving fast, followed by another car. We were in a country village where everything's usually very quiet at that time of day. I shouted for my boss to be careful, but instead of being careful, he came to help me, showing great bravery. I ended up with her partner forcing his way into the car. His upper body was inside and I was pushing him out so that my colleague could close her window and get out of danger. After that, he started banging on the car. I was shocked, trying to call someone on the phone but not even knowing that number 17 existed. Then my boss got hit instead of me. My ex-partner ran away and my boss informed the police. And in the afternoon, we filed a joint complaint. After that, the company decided to check all visitors' identities for security reasons. But the violence didn't stop, and two years later, it escalated spectacularly. Then I was attacked by the same person in my own home. The violence was extremely severe. The exact term is polytrauma. Fractures from the skull to the coccyx. I couldn't work for 18 months. I ended up being classed as disabled at the age of 38. On the company side, what were the first measures you took after this attack? I personally had flagged up this situation from the start. I think at the time the company wasn't experienced or mature enough. We had this notion that we shouldn't enter private space. When my colleague suffered this violence, given that she was hospitalised and on sick leave, we mainly provided support, telephoning regularly to check on her, making it clear that we considered her entirely off work. We didn't expect any input at all. In other words, we as an employer told her that she wasn't expected back at work immediately and she could take the time she needed. 
18 months later, how did your return to work go? When I wanted to return to work a little bit, despite my disability, they adapted my workstation. Before all this, I could get so much done in a given time, but now I really can't do as much. And then, after she'd been back at work for about a year and a half, she alerted us to the fact that her partner in prison was taking steps to get out early. I asked to be relocated to another facility. They accepted and got it done very fast. They made good choices for me. I have a fellow director who was kind enough to open up and adapt a position for her. There was a real company dynamic in which the head of human resources was completely involved and a real, real advocate. We arranged that position for a year. It was very generous, very helpful to me. They adapted my working hours, my tasks, made sure I was working close to home, not having a long commute, all that sort of thing. All of that must have led to real changes within your company. Yes, completely. There was a new awareness within the company. It affects us, and it can affect anyone in a company at any level. I've recently heard about a situation involving someone in a very senior position. We're all exposed in these situations. There's no social hierarchy which dictates whether your partner or your husband attacks you. So I think that this is a reality that we as managers still have to work on. Before we leave you, do you have a particular message for our listeners? Well, yes. Believe in the people around you. Despite what you think, even if you don't talk about it, even if you don't say anything, everyone around you does realise, so don't hesitate to talk about it. You are subjected to violence, you are not the cause of it, and you have to talk about it and ask for things to change, in your daily life, with your family, with your employer, with everyone. The only message is that we must all be sensitive to each other at work and elsewhere. Be sensitive to changes in people. Any change in behaviour must lead us to ask questions. Today, I'd go further into someone's private life, further than I was willing to go a few years ago, because I think that we must not miss the clues which can mean that a life can be turned upside down or even end completely. And that's the end of the 2021 season of One in Three Women, the podcast. You can listen to all of our podcasts on the website of the FAS Foundation, fondationfas.org. Thank you very much to our guests and thank you to the companies in the network committed to fighting violence against women. The Foundation Agir Contre l'Exclusion, The Caring Foundation, L'Oréal, Corian, Carrefour, BNP Paribas, The Solidarity Fund We Care, Publicis, SNCF, PwC, the French Development Agency, and EPNAC. These podcasts were produced in partnership with Media Meeting. Have a great day. Goodbye. Together, let's act against domestic violence.